Hey guys, welcome to Connecting the Dots, the channel where we follow the breadcrumbs and try to predict where disruptions will take us. Great minds may think alike, but Elon Musk thinks different. In this video, we'll compare Elon's approach to humanoid robots with that of a respected robotics expert. This expert's views and ideas are surprising and shed new light on both Elon Musk and Tesla's Optimus robot. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe. A massive thank you to our newest patrons, Mark S., Wayne S., Rebel Aquaponics, Dennis C., Alan B., and Robert T. You guys rock. And if you too want to help keep me making these videos, there's a link in the description. Now buckle up and get ready because we are about to enter a world of disruptions, and disruptions are never boring. Ken Goldberg is a leading researcher in robotics and automation. As chief scientist of two robotics companies with 30 years of teaching robotics, over 300 papers and several patents, the guy is a real expert. In late 2023, Ken gave a TED talk called, Why Don't We Have Better Robots Yet? Let's hear his thoughts and compare them to Elon's. I have a feeling most people in this room would like to have a robot at home. It'd be nice to be able to do the chores and take care of things. Where are these robots? What's taking so long? Where are the robots? Now, I've been doing research at UC Berkeley for 30 years with my students on robots. And in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to try to explain the gap between fiction and reality. We've seen images like this, right? These are real robots. They're pretty amazing. But those of us who work in the field, well, the reality is more like this. <laughs> That's 99 out of 100 times, that's what happens. I started watching Hopefully, but here things started feeling funny. This talk was four months after Tesla showed this footage, and this guy is showing us Atlas? By this time, Atlas was downright ancient and there were better robots around. But maybe he just needed an example of a fall. Let's go on. And in the field, there's something that explains this that we call Moravec's paradox. And that is what's easy for robots, like being able to pick up a large object, large heavy object, is hard for humans. But what's easy for humans, like being able to pick up some blocks and stack them, that is very hard for robots. And this is a persistent problem. So the ability to grasp arbitrary objects is a grand challenge for my field. I have spent my entire career studying how to make robots less clumsy. Now let's start with the hardware. The hands. Now these are, this is a robot hand, a particular type of hand. It's a lot like our hand. And it has a lot of motors, a lot of tendons and cables, as you can see. So it's unfortunately not very reliable. It's also very heavy and very expensive. So I'm in favor of very simple hands, like this. So this has just two fingers. It's known as a parallel jaw gripper. It's very simple, it's lightweight and reliable, and it's very inexpensive. So Atlas wasn't a fluke. This is what Ken Goldberg knows, but there's a reason. He is an expert, and since disruptions come from outside, experts are the last to see them. During Tesla's second AI day, Another expert did a live thread that mocked everything Tesla revealed. By them, Tesla is making beginner's mistakes, because why make a hand when a gripper or suction cup are enough? Since experts know that humanoid hands are hard and claws are good enough, they stop thinking about the problem. And when actuators become smaller, more powerful, and easier to control, they fail to notice that this enables new designs that are simpler, better, and more reliable. So the first advantage Elon has over long entrenched experts is that he refuses to be one. He starts afresh from first principles, questions everything, and sees possibilities which experts are blind to. It's very simple, it's lightweight and reliable, and it's very inexpensive. And if you're doubting that simple hands can be effective, look at this video where you can see that two very simple grippers are capable of doing very complex things. Actually, in industry, there's even a simpler robot gripper, and that's the suction cup. And that only makes a single point of contact. So again, simplicity is very helpful in our field. Now, let's talk about the software. And this is where it gets really, really difficult. While I agree with Ken that simpler is better, don't let it fool you because this isn't simplifying. Simplifying means making a simpler design with similar capabilities, which is not the case. This is trying to solve a much smaller problem. Elon thinks differently, so the second advantage Elon has is that he is willing to ignore experts and go after the big problems. Many CEOs can tackle small problems, which is the safe thing to do, but nobody except Elon has the boldness to tackle huge problems while risking failure. The intelligence and team inspiring to enable solving these problems. 
and an outstanding track record to enable board and shareholders to back him as he tries to do the impossible. Experts may say he's crazy, but it's those rockets landing on their tail, cars driving themselves, and humanoid robots replacing human labor that bring immense value to the shareholders and change the world itself. Now, let's talk about the software. And this is where it gets really, really difficult because of a fundamental issue, which is uncertainty. There's uncertainty in the control, there's uncertainty in the perception, and there's uncertainty in the physics. Now, what do I mean by the control? Well, if you look at a robot's gripper, trying to do something, it's, there's a lot of uncertainty in the cables and the mechanisms that cause very small errors, and these can accumulate and make it very difficult to manipulate things. Coming from industrial robots, Goldberg requires zero errors. However, Optimus uses extremely compact actuators, which can be placed locally, enabling very short cables which barely stretch. Moreover, it self-calibrates to cancel out errors and uses vision and AI to overcome imprecisions. Goldberg is blind to this, but Elon doesn't settle for compromised solutions. Going from first principles, he finds a way. Now, in terms of the sensors, yes, robots have very high-resolution cameras, just like we do. And that allows them to take images of scenes in traffic or in a warehouse. But these don't give you the three-dimensional structure of what's going on. So recently, there was a new development called LiDAR. And this is a new class of cameras that use light beams to build up a three-dimensional model of the environment. Shaking my head here. If humans can see in stereo, why can't robots? And I thought this guy wanted to simplify, but with grippers, he goes for a smaller prize. And with vision, he goes over the top and uses LiDAR. Elon, on the other hand, is methodical. With his five steps, he solves huge problems with fewer parts and processes, and lower costs. The last issue is the physics. And let me illustrate for you by showing you, we take a bottle on a table and we just push it, and the robot's pushing it in exactly the same way each time. But you can see that the bottle ends up in a very different place each time. And why is that? Well, it's because it depends on the microscopic surface topography underneath the bottle as it's slid. For example, if you put a grain of sand under there, it would react very differently than if there weren't a grain of sand. And we can't see if there's a grain of sand because it's under the bottle. Trapped in a mindset of industrial robots, Goldberg requires bringing the bottle to a precise spot. Elon uses AI to make this requirement redundant. This footage shows his example of a robot's point of view with the errors in its sensors and actuators. Compare this to what Optimus really sees. And this guy seems pathetic. I was shocked by the closed-mindedness of this expert. He then showed that humanoid robots fall when lifting packages. So he built a mail sorting system with industrial robots and suction cups. That's great, and I'm glad his robots can't fall over. But changing the world requires doing the crazy things. Let's now talk about this video's sponsor, Hillcrest Energy Technologies, ticker symbol HLRTF. I don't typically create these types of videos, but this one is an exception because of their zero voltage switching technology. Inverters are essential components in modern electrical systems. They convert direct current to alternating current and back. For example, to power EVs, DC current from the battery is converted to AC for the motor, and during region braking, AC is converted to DC. Since conversion isn't fully efficient, with each conversion, 3 to 10% of the energy is lost. In addition, inverters create electromagnetic interference, EMI, which can disrupt nearby components. To solve this, zero-voltage switching, ZVS, was suggested. For decades, many prototypes came and went, but prototypes are easy and production is hard, so it took 35 years to solve production of ZVS inverters with near-perfect efficiency in real-world conditions. Hillcrest Energy Technologies is the only company to achieve commercial ZVS inverters. They own several patents, which enable producing commercially viable inverters with up to 99.7% efficiency. That's huge. Low-end inverters lose up to 10% of the energy, and high-end units lose 3 to 4%. So Hillcrest Energy ZVS inverters are an order of magnitude less lossy. In solar farms, saving 3% of all energy is massive. In grid-scale storage, conversion is needed when charging and discharging. So that's 6% of all energy. And for EVs constantly accelerating and braking, the savings are compounded even more. Since fewer batteries are required for the same range, the car becomes lighter. Removing their weight, as well as of unneeded EMI shielding, further amplifies the savings. This results in up to a massive 15% reduction in required battery size, and up to a giant $2,200 cost savings per car. Hillcrest Energy Technologies has integrated their inverters in electric vehicles, 
and are in discussions with European OEMs to include their inverters in several EVs. Their team is highly experienced in the grid connect power sector, the automotive sector, and production of power electronics and control systems. One of their members has built and led two billion dollar companies. Another was a top engineer from Mercedes-Benz. They have strong industry and manufacturing ties and to enable smooth production, they've partnered with Systematech, a German company specializing in producing EV powertrain. As a fun fact, Hillcrest's CTO and I share the same alma mater. A university ranked third globally in non-American universities that have produced the most unicorn founders. With the current slump in small tech stocks, Hillcrest's market cap is not much higher than the $20 million they invested developing their technology. But with recent developments, it is starting to pick up. There is huge interest in their inverter and lots of room for them to grow by both producing it themselves and licensing their technology to other manufacturers. Nothing here is financial advice, but if you're interested in catching a new tech company while it's still small, their website is hillcrestenergy.tech and their ticker is HLRTF. The Canadian government recently gave them funding to check their inverter in a Hercules e-boat. And if you Google, there's a ton of data on them as they are starting to gain momentum. So do your own homework and check them out. I don't normally label people as pathetic, but I made an exception here. Had this been three years ago or some noob talking to their friends, I would have kept quiet. But this was late 2023 when Optimus, Figure One, Sanctuary, and others were already revealed and Digit was already handling packages. And as shown on screen, this was a real expert giving his best at a TED Talk. And I don't want to discredit Ken Goldberg. The guy achieved a lot and clearly was open to new ideas along the way. But I guess this thing just happens. If you don't pay attention, one day you become such an expert that you kind of know everything and have nothing new to learn. As mentioned earlier, disruption comes from the outside. So the more expert you are, the blinder you are to disruptions. I knew that. Yet it was shocking to see the extent of this. This gave me renewed appreciation of Tesla's model, where often bright and resourceful noobs are tasked with solving huge problems. They can talk to experts and learn, but going by first principles and the five-step methodology, they find unconventional answers to seemingly solve problems. You can't make long-range EVs, yet Tesla did. You can't do huge castings, yet Tesla did. You can't do 48 volts, yet Tesla did. You can't do a stainless steel truck, yet Tesla did. And you can't make effective humanoid robots, yet Tesla is doing just that. This truly is a great company, but what do you think? Do you agree with Elon's approach, or do you see merit in the more cautious path taken by traditional experts? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I want to hear your perspectives. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting me on patreon.com slash connecting odots for as little as one buck a month. Besides helping me make more content, you will get early ad-free access to all my videos as well as monthly patron-exclusive content. Come follow me on X, where I am connecting O dots. Until next time, I am connecting the dots and you are amazing.